Hello my friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA results, predicted phenotype traits and GD match results of a Bronze Age individual from Kyrgyzstan. Uh, first, let's talk about the culture this individual belongs to. It is Aigirjal culture in Kyrgyzia. It is an Indo-European individual. His um, mitochondrial lineage is HV14 and his Y DNA is J2, J2A. Very interesting. We're going to see what Y DNA he scores with Matrade Predictor, but his Y DNA in reality is J2A. Uh, and he lived, actually, I said, um, yeah, he lived, he lived in the Bronze Age, the Bronze, Bronze Age period, because I got confused with the time period, because I see uh, 2K uh, years, and I, saw, I thought it was like before present, but it's before Common Era. So that's Bronze Age. So that's a Bronze Age individual from Kyrgyzstan, very interesting individual. We're going to explore his result. Uh, we're gonna start actually with the haplogroup, right? So um, officially we know it's J2A, but my trade predictor predicts for him J. However, if you look at the panel of the variants, you see he's got IJ, he's got J, um, he's got J, and it looks like he's got five variants for J2A out of seven total. So even looking at this, um, even looking at this haplogroup table, you could probably figure out. That he most likely has J2A, but the reason it's not showing up for him as J2A, the reason it was he wasn't predicted to have J2A, is because he doesn't have any any variants for J2, right? So you can't have J2A without having J2, and and that's just a, a unfortunate reality because it's not a very high quality file, right? So if it was a higher quality file, he would have got the actual correct prediction, but because he doesn't have any variants for J2, it's out of zero total, which means there is nothing nothing relevant for that was found in his file at all because of this. Um, quirk, he's not getting a haplogroup prediction that's correct. He's only getting J uh, as his final prediction. But anyway, let's move on to his ethnic calculator. Let's see what he scores with Eurogenes K13 first. As you can see, he's scoring 50.8% West Asian, which is kind of like this Georgian slash Iranian specific drift, right? He's scoring 23% South Asian, which is kind of like India, 18% uh, Baltic, which is, uh, in his case, obviously the result of Indo European admixture or admixture from. Uh, these steppe peoples, and then 6% Amerindian and 1.21% Siberian, which is kind of low. Like, um, keep in mind that this is a person who, keep in mind that this is a person who lived in um, Kyrgyzia. This is an individual who lived right here in Kyrgyzia, and uh, Kyrgyz people, if you don't know what they look like, they are very, very East Eurasian. Let me look them up. Let me show you what they look like. Um, yeah, like this. I mean, this is actually this is not even a good picture. Like, there's better pictures, like this, for example. That that's a better picture of what they look like as a whole. So, uh, somebody who looks like this, obviously, this is this is not what this individual looked like. Uh, this individual is very different from modern Kyrgyz. He's very uh, Indo-European. He's very sort of Mediterranean, even in appearance. And then and then the result, you can see he's getting more of a mixture of Kalash plus North Ossetian. Both Kalash and North Ossetians are very West Eurasian, very Mediterranean-looking people. Uh, second closest mixture is Kalash plus Chechen. Uh, third closest is Baloch plus Erzia. Uh, both Baloch and Erzia are West Eurasians, but Erzia, Erzia aren't really Mediterraneans. They are more like Northern Northern Europeans. Uh, fourth closest mixture is Brahwi plus Erzia. So he seems to be getting more as a mixture of various Southwest Pakistani groups plus North uh, Eastern Europeans, which is definitely very interesting. So you can see he's got a mixture of um, he's got a mixture of pre-Indo-European inhabitants of Central Asia plus in the European invaders, and he's definitely very West Eurasian in his result. Let's see what he scores with my trade predictor. So we're going to look at the ethnic calculator section first. And here, he is closest to Karakaba Turkics. Very interesting. Kind of inaccurate. I don't think he should be that close to them. Followed by that are South Asians. Followed by that is Shahra Isakhtep, Bronze Age period 2. Uh, followed by that is Balshoi Leni Ostrov from Europe. Followed by that is Uyghurs. Followed by that is Goyet, followed by that it is Punjabi Jat, then Kazakh, then Sri Lankan, then South Indian. So he seems to be more Eastern with my um, ethnic calculator than he is with reality. And he's actually getting more of a mixture of Sarmatian from Euros plus Polynesian as the closest mixture. Or Kazakh plus Burtas from Volga as the second closest mixture. So the thing is with my um, ethnicity calculator is that the SP count is always going to be very low and uh, when you have such a low SP count it's very difficult to accurately and precisely predict your ethnicity your ethnic background so sometimes it's going to be very spot on sometimes it's going to be like yeah exactly that's exactly what you are but 
like in my, in my case, for example, for my ethnicity result, it was really spot on. But um, oftentimes it will be just kind of vaguely within the right um, direction, but not exactly correct. So this is one of those cases where it's not exactly correct. Uh, let's see what he scores for initial code calculator results, what he looks like. Let's move on, move on to that. What does he look like? So it looks like he's got brown color eyes. Um, darkest brown eyes is also quite possible at 34% likelihood, but uh, he does not have anything lighter than brown, like blue eyes or blue eyes with ember center or green. That's really unlikely. That's All of that is below 1% probability. Hazel eyes, 4% probability, also very low. Most likely his eye color is brown or dark brown. Uh, for hair color, definitely black hair. I mean, there is no even there is no option for any hair color besides black. There's no way he's got any hair color lighter than black. So he's definitely got black hair, and he's definitely got light brown skin as well. So um, there is a nine percent likelihood of all Ivor Mediterranean skin for him. But to be honest, most likely he's got light brown skin. And for hair texture, it looks like he's got wavy hair, but straight and curly hair is also quite possible, and he does not have kinky hair. Right, so this is something I added right like yesterday, which is the relation between various uh, SNPs and blue eye haplotypes. How predictive are these SNPs of these blue eye haplotypes? So this might be very interesting. I'm not going to go over it right now. Um, you can actually observe a very funny trend with these blue eye haplotypes is that BH4 is inversely correlated with all the other blue eye haplotypes. I find it kind of interesting. But he does not have BH4, nor BH2, nor BH3. All right. And. Um, Let's go ahead and look at his phenotype oracle, what phenotypes he is scoring. This takes into account ethnicity as well, but it's kind of like a it's kind of like a very different calculator for ethnicity. This is not the same ethnic calculator as what you see here. Um, it's actually a different one, and it's it's based on my um, eye shape predictor that I made like three or four months ago. So his closest um, appearances are this number one, followed by this for number two, followed by this for number three, and for the mixtures. Let's look at the phenotype mixtures. Wow, that's crazy. So he's he's got like a South Asian or like an Indian um Indian substrate in his phenotype, which is definitely very interesting. That's because he's so dark. Right? He he's so dark and he's um probably scoring high for South Asian. We can actually check that right now what he's scoring for South Asian. Let's see. So he's scoring 6% for Australoid for the um appearance morphology thing and he's scoring 61% for South Asian. Yeah, so that's why he's scoring so much uh, why there's so much Indian in the Oracle. That definitely explains it. Uh, well, okay. Now that we've seen that, let's go and see what he scores for the biomarkers. And for the biomarkers, it looks like he's got a above average level of vitamin D. It looks like he's got a below average level of LDL cholesterol, which is really good. Slightly below average level for HDL, which is which is okay. Um, below average for glucose levels, all right. Um, slightly above average for hemoglobin, which is kind of good as well. Um, slightly above average blood pressure, which is not so good. Like I think this is this falls into the elevated, elevated. Um, yeah. So his predicted blood pressure is actually elevated, which is kind of unfortunate. For expected level of iron in the blood, it looks like he's got a slightly below average level of iron in the blood, which is really good as well. Doesn't have hemochromatosis, and um, slightly below average level of sex hormone binding globulin, and uh, slightly below average uh, red blood cell count. All right, very interesting. Nothing too concerning here. Uh, if you're like a if you're like a expert on the effects of red blood cell count or SHBG, if you're if you don't if you know a lot about this stuff, this might be very interesting for you. I personally am not that well versed in the topic of health. I just kind of look up biomarkers that I can add, and I look look them up on Gvas Central, see what correlations there are between between S and P's and stuff, and I add them here. I don't really like go in depth exploring and researching what these biomarkers imply and what like how they uh how they affect your body i just kind of have a very surface level understanding of what it does right so let's go ahead and see what he scores for the polygenic risk scores and see what predispositions he has so it looks like he's got a below average predisposition to leukemia it looks like he's got a below average predisposition to vitiligo very good below average predisposition to myopia really good as well uh slightly above average predisposition to primary biliary cirrhosis he's got a average predisposition predisposition to stroke he's got a slightly above average predisposition to male pattern hair loss he's got a slightly below average predisposition to atrial fibrillation he's got um he's got uh, nothing nothing relevant was found for dvt very unfortunate very low risk score for bipolar type one very low risk score for schizophrenia definitely really good to see that 
uh, slightly above average score for uh, type 2 diabetes, very high score for Alzheimer's, which is kind of unfortunate. So we're going to look at the score for Alzheimer's and we're going to explore what made it like this. Uh, he's got a slightly below average score for multiple sclerosis. He's got two risk variants for breast cancer of 10, which is kind of okay. That's good. Seven risk variants for testicular cancer of 14, which is okay as, as well. Really good. Uh, zero risk variants for celiac disease out of eight. All right. Uh, no risk variants for GSS. Really good. Five risk variants for Crohn's out of 20. Kind of good. Uh, no risk variance for Raffensteins and one risk variance for Parkinson's out of 12, which is kind of good as well. So pretty, pretty typical good result. The only thing we have to really watch out for is the Alzheimer's. We're going to look at the scores and we're going to look at the, the monogenic traits and we're going to find out why he's scoring the way he is for Alzheimer's. So it looks like he's got um, what a year genotype in MAOA and heterozygous genotype in COMT. So he's more what a year than what a year. Uh, for DRD2, he definitely has less dopamine D2 receptors, which is... Uh, which is okay. There, I mean, there's advantages to having more. There's advantages to having less. The advantages to having less mainly is like he's got lower odds of schizophrenia due to that. So that's definitely really good. Um, and for, yeah, he's got AG in TAC1. That's that's a big reason. That's a big part of the reason why he's scoring less for dopamine D2 receptors. For autism, he's got higher odds of autism. By the way, this is something I just added like recently. Um, this section for autism takes into account not only that that's here, but also everything that's everything that's in the file that has anything to do with autism so it's not only that so it's not only the stuff that's on this panel it's much more polygenic so he actually does have higher odds of autism which is definitely very interesting for lactose persistence he does not carry the european lactose persistence mutation for oxtr and the empathy gene it looks like he's got a predisposition to slightly lower empathy uh from my perspective just visually looking at it it looks like the red is kind of the high the, the largest um the largest group here the largest block so it looks like he's got a predisposition to lower empathy. All right. For um, for diabetes, we already scored, saw his score. His score was fine. For hemochromatosis, it looks like he does not have any risk variance for hemochromatosis, which is really good to see. And we remember he was scoring normal for the iron level. So once again, really good. Um, he's got this genotype, which actually increased the odds of PCOS, which is definitely very interesting. Um myopia panel he's got a g allele here which uh, i remember he was scoring really low for myopia so that's 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 a big contributor the g allele here uh it leads to a lower risk of myopia and better eyesight also very european allele to score definitely very good to see myopia in case you don't know it is um nearsightedness being being unable to see in a distance or in some cases it is also referred to um it is also used to refer to farsightedness where you can see in a distance but you can't really see close up so you need glasses either way i have myopia and I score slightly above average for it. Um, I know a lot of people who have myopia. It's like a very modern thing. Um, it's kind of funny. None of my ancestors have myopia. And I'm like the first of my lineage. To, I'm, yeah. I have a lot of conditions that I'm the first of my lineage to have. Myopia is one of them. So it looks like he's got, um, it looks like he's got increased risk of vitiligo in the HL aging. And for the facial morphology panel, it looks like he's got, European genotype in EDAR, definitely really good to see. Longer mid-face length, intermediate odds of protruding nasal bridge, larger nose size, and intermediate eyebrow thickness. Definitely very interesting. However, he's got higher nasolabial angle based on DCHS2 genotype. Very interesting. Doesn't have micropenis. Uh, really good to see. Impaired muscle performance, likely endurance athlete. Ouch. That's ouch. Uh, one fat gene variant in FTOs, RS99, So he's somewhat predisposed to obesity, but not really. Uh, and he does not have any risk variants for his increased pain sensitivity. All right, that's really good. Uh, it looks like his risk to, of heart failure due to better blocker medications is one, one times the average is because none of the relevant stuff was found here. Um, there's nothing much to talk about in this when it comes to drug response here, actually. Uh, nor can I really talk about stuff that's here on the sex hormone panel. I should make like an interactive, not, not, not like an interactive, but I should, make a, I should make it easier to understand. I'll figure out some way to make this whole sex hormone thing uh more digestible okay uh for cancer panel it looks like he's got um slightly higher risk of testicular cancer based on his gene type in keto g which is by far the most imp important gene when it comes to um uh, testicular cancer risk for leukemia panel it looks like he's got some genotypes that increase the risk of leukemia but really he's good um okay rare diseases he does not really have any predispositions to rare diseases for male male pattern hair loss he definitely has a predisposition to being um, a higher higher odds for male pattern hair loss definitely very interesting so we remember he was scoring high for that like, let's see how much he was scoring for that actually because i i forget what he scored for 
Yeah, 1.79. So yeah, he's definitely got a predisposition to higher odds of hair, um, male pattern hair loss. Where were we? Yes, we were here. Uh, for Kahneman syndrome panel, doesn't have any risk evidence for that. Crohn's disease, nothing relevant was found, so that's really good. Um, because we remember he was scoring kind of high for the risk scores or risk variance for that. So none of the risk variance were in the important variations. That's really good to see once again. For HIV in his panel, no protective evidence from HIV. That's really good as well. For muscular dystrophy myopathies, no risk variance for that. Really, really good for colorblindness. No risk variance for, co for colorblindness. Really good as well. He's not colorblind. For FTO gene panel, it looks like he's got some genotypes that reduce the risk of obesity, which is really, really, really good. But I remember he was heterozygous. Yes, he is heterozygous for this variation. So he's got... Uh, some alleles for increased risk of obesity, but really he's probably not that predisposed to increased risk of obesity. Uh, also, obesity is something that's very environmental, like depending on what you, your diet is, what medications you take, what um, your lifestyle is, you might be completely different. Like you might be predisposed to being really skinny, but be really fat, or you might be predisposed to be really fat, but because of your lifestyle, you're really skinny. So I don't really care about it too much. Uh, it's all really um, uh, life circumstances relative. He's got two copies of the farmer's CLTCL1 gene variant, which means uh, he has a selective advantages in processing carbohydrate-rich diets, which is definitely very interesting. Um, and for blood group panel, it looks like his blood type is type O. All right, so he's got type O blood, the most common blood type by far. And um, yep, that's pretty much all there is for this individual. Thanks for watching my video until the very end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And I also want to remind you that you can download this file, um, the 23 and 23andMe format file for this individual from link which is in the description of the video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.